I mean, I brought Thank my engineer to speak. All right, let's get started. Yeah. Thank you all for coming. Um, sorry if you were disappointed uh, a couple of weeks ago when we had to cancel because of weather, although some of you did brave the elements, so we appreciate the effort. Uh, so we will continue uh, two of the meetings, uh, two of the hearings that we started last week. The first one is a, an RDA for 221 County Street. Yeah, if you'd like to come up. Step up to the microphone over there. Yeah. yeah. Good evening. For the record, you are? Thomas Shan. Can you just briefly describe what you'd like to do at your property there? I, I'm just passing around the plan. But yes, there is, an, there is an existing, I guess it's termed a permanent dock. It's a permanent deck. It rests on boulders. It's been there for as long as I've been there, so it's probably been there 20 years or so. And there's a set of stairs that go to it. I want to take out the stairs and that deck down there and redo it. I was at the site today, and um, you explained very clearly what you wanted to do. And as you point out, it's an existing dock. Well, it's an existing stairway with a platform, I guess you'd call it. Right. Made out of wood. The wood is really in tough shape, and you essentially just want to remove that structure and replace it with one that's made more of aluminum and, and steel beams. And no dredging, no filling, no alteration. No tree cutting, no tree clearing. Is it the dock? No, con no concrete no. work. No nothing. And you're no using soil. those spiffy stainless steel beams you have up top, right? For yes. the base. Yes. It's all going to be out of pretty gonna, much out of stainless and aluminum. Yep. yep. So, Mr. And it's going it's to be it's going to set and be fastened to the existing bowlers that are there. And I'm going to utilize uh, part of uh, part of that deck down there. I'm going to attach to the existing retaining walls, a concrete blo block retaining wall, so I'm going to utilize that as well. I'm going to do the work myself. won't be any heavy equipment. So he has filed a, a request for determination of applicability, requesting whether or not the work would require a notice of intent. Question? Go ahead. So, Based on uh, your site visit, Lenore, yes. what is your recommendation? I would recommend a negative determination. Negative three, meaning that the work is it's really not in the wetland. I mean, it sits over the pond, but there's really no activity on the ground, if you will. The, mm -hmm. you know, the footings and the structural components are going to remain the same. So it's really just taking off the existing structure and re replacing it with one that's built out of steel and aluminum. <coughs> so without any alteration, I think it would be appropriate. I would recommend a negative determination. You said there, there are uh, existing boulders in place and that you're gonna attach your, your deck to that. How, what mechanism are you gonna use to do that? Um, I've got some stainless steel dropping anchors and I'm gonna drill into the boulder with a rotary hammer and sink the anchor. I've got stainless steel threaded rod and I'm going to, you know, cut it to length and attach the, the piece of stainless um, girder that I have. You know, it's, it should be on there. But it, it, it's just attaching to the existing boulders, resting where in the boulders. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have a, an aluminum angled ledger that I'm going to essentially attach the same way into the existing retaining wall. It, it is a ready block retaining wall. So those, that's going to be the means of support. Yeah, there don't. won't be any concrete, there won't be any forms, uh, there won't even be a, a shovel brought down there, there won't be a need to. Well, you'll need a drill. Well, yeah, but... Uh, and the boulders are big yeah. boulders. Yeah, but though. you don't have to move, move any of the boulders. Oh, you're no. not moving those no. boulders. <laughs> I don't, I haven't seen it. So I don't know no, I mean, it, the way it was originally built, it's just, it's basically just sitting on the boulders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. not it's secured. Just, huh? It's not secured? No. Not really. And it's never gone when, anywhere. When, when, <laughs> it, when, it, when it floods, I've had to get on there with 55-gallon drums and set them on there, fill them full of pond water, and watch the pond go, go up over that. Just this one's going to be elevated about 10 inches above that. Not to mention it's not going to be made out of wood, which is buoyant. Right. And it's going to be fastened. So for those reasons, you know, I'm going to be just that much more out of the flood zone and between the stainless and the aluminum. Um, and the attachment it should be good. So no pressure treated lumber. Well, there may be pressure treated on the stringers, 
the stringers that are going down to an existing uh, landing that I'm going to build. Yep. Um, so the stringers themselves may be pressure treated, but they're, you know, well, they, a lot of that. Are they area. currently pressure treated or some sort it's of? Currently, it, currently, it's all pressure treated. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, I might opt for some other style of string, or, you know, maybe out of aluminum, but for now, I'm probably going to go with that. But the railing system is going to be out of aluminum tubing and. I'm not, not going to be anyone like it on the pond. <laughs> You're be, in business. It's going to be the envy. Yeah. Would you entertain a motion, Mr. Chair? Uh, one, one, one final question. Um, uh, the only I, I'm in favor, so I recommend that we, we do approve it. Um, but it, I would ask that if you make any changes in the course of your, your work, that you come to us and let us know what that change is, if it's you know, in any way significant. I, I definitely will, but you know, I've had a friend of mine who's tied in with the engineering draw that, so I'd have a nice sketch, uh -huh. and that's how I'm going to do it. All right. And I and I don't plan to deviate, nor do I have a desire. <laughs> but I know what you're saying; it's a fair question. If something was to change, I mean, I and when I'm done and I've got to get it signed off, you know, the permit signed off, I don't have mm -hmm. a problem with it. Of course, anyone looking at it, and so. All right. Great, thank you. Yep. Good, if you want to make your motion. I make a motion to close the hearing and issue a negative three determination for the deck and stair reconstruction at 221 County Road in Lakeville. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I have a signature page. Why don't we start it at that? Uh, next is a continuation of notice of intent for 141 County Street, Lot 3, also known as 142 County Street, 152. Um, <laughs> what's your pleasure? You can call one. I'll take those. Okay. I'll take those. I'll take those. Uh, my name is Jeff Youngquist from Outback Engineering. Uh, it actually is Lot 3. It's off Highland Street but the original property is 141. So there's three lots, and the form A has been signed, and it, the lots are created. Okay, so you got the, planning board approval? Yes, planning board approval. It's already been in the, uh, it's already been signed, it's just sitting there. Nobody's ever bought a pick So it was an A&R lot? An A&R lot, three lots up a Highland Street. Don't, uh, don't say Highland Street, because that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, oh, it, it used to yes. in Clark Shores, I'm this sorry. Highland Road. Highland Road. Basically, it's a single family home uh, with a septic system, driveway coming up in here, and then a pool area in back. It's a high water table, extremely high water table. And so basically the house, the basin yeah, elevation is going to be above the existing ground. It means all the other crap. Uh, a lot of fill. Um, they've got it as far, you know, they want it as far back away from the Highland Road as you can get. And, uh, so basically, it's tucked away in the back. This is an open field. Well, you, you know what it is. You remember it. So, but that's basically what we're doing. You want to start? Um. I was out there, and I was out there last week, I think, of the day that we continued the hearing. So that was about two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. And the lot has been entirely cleared of all vegetation. Yes, it has. Right up to the edge of what appeared to be wetland flags. So in a situation like that, mm -hmm. 
the only thing that I have to look at when I'm trying to determine whether that wetland line is accurate is the soils because the vegetation's gone. And the ground was frozen, there was no snow cover, and so I had my auger with me, but I could I not no break into to. that. So as far as the wetland delineation goes, I really have some questions about it because I have nothing to go by. The vegetation's gone, the soils are not there, and there are some other wet areas um, as you come down the existing driveway and off to the, I guess it would be the, the north. And I wondered whether or not you had looked at those properties, whether GIS or, or otherwise, to see if there are any additional wetland areas that might come within right. 100 feet of uh, this. This, uh, the wetland line is approved per an order of resource air delineation issued on 12-18-2017. I looked at that old plan, and the problem with that is the only flags that were confirmed under that determination were ones by Ken Thomas, and they were identified on the plan as KT. Okay. These flags, at least half of them, are totally new. So that note is not correct. The, okay. the, it didn't, the wetland line did not extend that far off, you know, to the, the, the southern edge of the property. So the determination did set a line, but not at this particular home site. I'm not seeing the KT flags on this. That was the other issue, that the flags were re renamed or renumbered here on this new right. plan, and it was re really difficult to try to figure Is out. Is this what different from the one we have? Yes. Because the one we have shows the KT flag. That's yes. right. That's right. The, they're, they're, they actually are shown correctly, it's just that they stop at the KT, so you know there's six or seven flags out there that right. were not confirmed okay. as part of that ORAD. Right, no, and they, they just found the other flags and they, the, whatever, the parts of them and reflagged it. Who reflagged it? They didn't, it just tied uh, ribbons on them. Uh, some of our office, I can't remember exactly who was out there, but... Do you have any wetlands report or anything that I no. could use no. because without some kind of evidence, I mean, I don't have vegetation, I don't have soils, it's really hard to confirm the wetland line. And as you point out, it's a really high water table out there. Yes. So there's pockets of standing water all over the place. And, you know, when you have water at the surface, generally you can have wetland plants. No, I don't have anything in here. What were the soils? What did the map show? No. Oh, right. Um, situate. Situate. Sandy situate. Sandy Long. Yeah. That was the WSS. Are you familiar with Web Soil Survey? Yes. That's okay. the only thing we have to go by. Yeah. And yeah. it's you know as you know it's not it's not meant to be used on a scale like that certainly. So. Um, Perk rates are anywhere from twenty six to infinity. Yeah. <laughs> what do they go from uh, 35, 60, 26, and 23? So can you get us some additional information about the wetlands? At least something that we have? At, sure. So. I'll see what we got for records and okay. dig something up. But yeah, I mean, you're not going to go out there right now. You're not going to go. No, I couldn't get in. You know, yeah. it was like, bang. <laughs> no, unless, you have a, yeah, unless you have something with steam or... Uh, Almost High like flotation really time is in the next two weeks. <laughs> it's not, it's ground frozen. It is. Oh, it's, it's, yeah, as long as it's frozen, you yeah. can make it through there. Yeah, but um, it, you can't the, go through it. it the monitoring pass. pipes you have there, you're taking a look at uh, what, what shows for water, the water I table. Think, I think they have water table with uh, 26 inches, 24 inches, yeah. 24 and 24. Yeah. Two things. Yeah. Tree, tree stable throughout there, yeah. 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 Just right on the top. Which is why you're building this up so much. Well, the, the, the foundation's got to sit right on the surface. Benchmark, yeah. like an Two existing ground. water table. A, a bound. So, but basic. But right. Yes, I'll Does see what I can find if you want to continue. Yeah. We can figure out something. Yeah, because I mean, I just, yeah. I can't confirm it. So it must be you know, I mean, right now. you know, the vegetation clearing was not appropriate. You know that, I don't have to tell you that. Nope. And it makes it very difficult for, for us to now say it's not, it's, you know, that's the correct wetland line. So it, it, it further confuses things. <laughs> okay. Do we have any abutters here? Is, is there an abutter or anyone to this property? 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we, we have some people in the back. I know. Right. We did have some buyers yes. that were concerned. That's that's initially how we got involved. They all wanted to know. Right. When you started first clearing the yep. the lot. Um, well, <laughs> your, your that was the generic <laughs> you. Right. Yeah. And there, there are several flags that, that are shown there to the to the west that are off the property, yep. and uh, so, and then and on the property you have contours and grading that go right up to the property line. So you're definitely in in the uh, definitely in the buffer in the buffer. So, uh, and so we're concerned about that. And of course, there's the pool. Um, what, does anyone want to ask some questions about the pool or any concerns there? I had a question about the benchmark that shows in the plan. Just south of the house foundation, it shows the benchmark at elevation 94. Yes. Looks like it'll go up to 100 there. Is that an old historic existing benchmark or is that something you guys put in to start the project? I think that we started the project because the contour is right there at 94. Currently. Yeah, it's okay. It's, I it's, just uh, history wise, a, I just didn't know if there was an old stone a, bound that you went from. No, 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 no. Okay. It's a spike set in the ground. Okay. And, and use it for tow boing. And that's what we use for the bench because there's nothing else there. Very good. Okay. Yeah, and if you could look to the property off to the north there and see, you know, where does that wetland go? It kind of just stops there. It's like, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm questioning whether or not there's any wetlands off to the north that may also affect. The you mean going down through here? Yeah, because you can see standing water in there. Right. You know? So There's I'm like, some well, standing water right out there. Yeah, yeah. right. Well, that I whole mean, property is has a history of being pretty saturated. Yeah. So in fact, the other day there was water actually running off the corner of the driveway, going right across Highland Road. Oh. Mm. It's frozen ground, and we had rain, so mm. you know, yep. that's what you get. Okay. Yeah, if you want, I can have uh, Elise get a hold of you. Okay. Yeah, 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 because we need something to go by. I, I, at this point, I would say I, I, I can't agree with the wetland line because I don't have any, you know, it's a science, and when I don't have the science, I, I can't confirm. Yeah. Well, I don't think we're going to do any augering out there for a while, though. Mm -hmm. right. It's going to be very cold tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, Continue it for a couple weeks and we'll see if we can work something out. Okay. Is there anything else we want to ask now? Just to, if there's other things on the plan we want to vet, you had mentioned the pool. Uh, I, I hate to have them come back in a couple weeks and then we ask more questions and it make it another continuance if we could do things now. Uh, is there a proposed depth on the pool? I see there's a proposed top elevation of about. I, would, I really don't know, but. 99. Guessing at it, I would venture to say. Two, four, six. I would say it's an in-ground pool. Mm -hmm. So eight feet deep, so it'll just yep. be right down close to the water table, yep. but not in it. Yep. And mm -hmm. if there are going to be any structures associated with it, uh, pump house, changing rooms, yeah. you know, um, save I, them the trouble. I, I would recommend. No, I, I'll, I'll, that, I'll find that out there. I would recommend put a pool deck or anything on on the plan. Yeah, do it yeah, just no. so it's not a. Get it's it all it's the closest now. point to always, the wetland, so always. Any outbuilding they might ever be considering, do it now. <coughs> okay. Even if they never build it, it it'll be there. And uh, I'm sure that the driveway is going to be tar, and you're going to have associated parking, yep. all more non-permeable surface. It comes all the way back. Yep, all the way, yep. What about the fill? You said you're bringing in a lot of fill, and we can tell by the grading. Is that something you anticipate bringing in all at once, or is it kind of, I mean? I would mean, say that's exactly what's going to happen, because they'll more than likely strip out the top and sub, and they'll have to, it just goes down two feet, two to, you know, anywhere from 24 to 30 inches, and then bring in gravel or stone, then put your footings on top of that, and then uh, put the walls up, pour them, but then in order to pour them, you're going to have to build the dirt up around it so you can drive the cement truck up just so you can grab it, unless you're going to, uh, you know, pump it. You can pump it, I guess. But then, but yes, but then you, once you start filling it, you know, they couldn't frame it or anything, so you have to fill mm -hmm. all the way around the foundation so it'll be done in, in one, at one, you know, it'll probably take a couple of days because you're looking at 
I'd venture to say a few thousand yards of dirt. Mm, right. So you don't anticipate storing that no. on site, just it bringing be, it in and starting to grade it, just move grade it. it out, compact it, put it in, compact it, and it go straight up. From it. that's the only way you could do it. Right. If you, have, you have at least one stockpile, if not two, right now. Yeah. And that's pretty bouldery material. I, that's not worth anything. I didn't think. Yeah. You had no that's, plans for that's that. Some it's topsoil rock and mm -hmm. garbage. The stuff that's recently been spread up near the existing house looks like that yeah. kind of bouldery and jaggedy stuff. It's all yeah. above. Now you would you would you'd get some clean fill. Mm -hmm. And as we know, dirt ain't dirt cheap. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. Not anymore. Mm -hmm. Not anymore. So. Okay. So okay, more think, details on the plan if need yep. be, and more information about the wetlands. Yeah, and I'll have uh, Lisa get a hold of you next week. Great. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Well, do we want to make a motion to? I'll make the motion that okay. we continue by mutual agreement to, um, what's the date? March the 12th. Date. 12th. Is it? Is it? Let me pull up my calendar. Yeah. I got it right here. You it? do? Okay. What you got, John? March 12th. March 12th, 7 o'clock. And if, if we can't resolve the issue before March 12th, we'll be the 26th. Yep. Okay. Yeah, because I don't, and I think all the rest of this week is going to be cold. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think you're right. If not yeah, snow, at least tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Maybe snow. So, yeah. Yeah. Did we have a second? I uh, second. If we didn't have a second. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Very good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The legal ad, Joe. Got that. Uh, we, oh yeah. Did we already have the legal ad. I gave you the legal ad. Yeah. We got that. We do. That's right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Good night. Yeah, I think it's in the folder. Yeah, I saw it. All right, so we don't need to do anything else with that. Next on the list is a um, certificate of compliance for Setucket Trail. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for the record, Phil Cordero from Allen and Major Associates. I'm here with Mr. Roan Barber to my left, the owner of the uh, Satucker Trail subdivision. Uh, we're here requesting a closeout on an open order of conditions from 2007. Uh, so we, we were here in front of this commission for a six lot subdivision, a roadway extension for a drainage basin within buffer zone. Um, the work has been completed for quite some time. Um, the owner has been sitting on the land waiting for the top to set uh, so we, he could submit for roadway acceptance to the town, which we are now underway on doing that as well. We met with the selectmen last evening, uh, and they have voted to accept the layout of the roadway, so we'd like to clerically close out the order of conditions here as well. Um, I did have occasion to speak with uh, the agent here this afternoon regarding some questions that were raised. One was on... Initially, via email, was about natural heritage, uh, which I believe we have since resolved, Lenore, and that this project, while initially filed under natural heritage, natural heritage withdrew it from their maps on map amendment, so the project no longer had to maintain the deed restrictions and the property restric restrictions that were once imposed by the order. Uh, the other was a discussion regarding compliance with the stormwater basin, the rain garden uh, slash infiltration basin. The, the as-built plan maybe didn't properly show how it was actually constructed, which is a shallow depth basin with several feet of a large riprap underneath for infiltration. And I have some pictures tonight if we want to talk about that a little bit further. The agent, uh, Lenore, excuse me, had questions regarding uh, volume to make sure it meets the volume requirements, which we didn't provide those calculations as part of the package here. When the basin was constructed, the planning department was reviewing it through their peer consultants, uh, and they verified that the elevations and the, um, and the volumes met what they needed to under the subdivision permit, which was identical drawings that were present, presented here in front of the Conservation Commission. Uh, what we didn't show, and you asked this question of me earlier on the phone, Lenore, is we didn't show on the survey the, the, uh, the roadway that surrounds the basin, the access roadway, uh, which effectively also creates the spillway towards the wetland that is in fact there uh, and the owner is here to support that and we can discuss that in great detail. It's just not manifested very cleanly on the survey, which we can certainly you know, work to rectify. So, so that's where we're at. Happy to entertain any questions on it. Uh, again, we'd love to 
uh, close this out. The owner, you know, again, wants to close the books, if you will, on the project. Uh, it's been around for a long time. Yeah, if I could just explain a little bit. Thank you, Phil. That was great. Sure, thanks. The as bill came in, and it shows basically a, a, a small depression adjacent to the wetland area. And when I went back to the plan of record, this depression is this functional stormwater basin, i.e. Uh, I. E. a rain garden. And without any sort of contours, I questioned whether or not that stormwater basin or rain garden was constructed with sufficient volume so that you know it retains and contains any runoff that it was meant to do. So Phil and I had a conversation this afternoon and we looked back at the original plans and I did do a little more research on it and I see you do on your as bill here, you do have the invert elevation for the discharge coming out of the storm septa unit. Yes. And that's at the bottom, presumably. You wouldn't yes. put it anywhere else. And so when I compared that elevation with the elevation of what, you know, what it was supposed to be constructed at, those elevations do match. Right, they so, coincide. Yes. Right, they coincide, which says to me that, okay, you know, it was excavated to the proper depth you know, so that it functions as a drainage basin. So yeah. that, you know, when I did a little more work on it, it's, I thought, okay, you know, I feel better about the fact that I know what the invert is and I know how deep the basin is because your as -bell shows it at 95, whereas the, you know, the plan of record was like 87. Um, but as that's, you explained right. to me, that's right. it's a lot deeper and then they put in, you know, the design of this thing was kind of crazy. It was a basin lined full of riprap, basically, big, a big couple rip, feet of riprap. Rip yeah. And then a, a, a per, impervious liner with some loam on top. So you can see it. We, we uh, excuse my interruption to you. We, we, we discussed that, uh, we, we reviewed it, and those are some photographs from construction years ago okay. of the large riprap that we were talking about. So you, the bottom excavation is the 87.5, right. and that stone is what's building up the, the four to five feet. And initially it was on-site you know, um, uh, stone that they were breaking up and using, and then they were importing stone to infill that base. Right. And this certificate that you've requested does not cover any of the houses that were subsequently built. No, ma'am. This, this is, is only the, the effectively the basin. You know, the roadway construction necessitating the basin. That's all it covers. Right. That's right. 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 And with that, um, I'm I'm satisfied that we could move forward with the certificate. But that's my recommendation, and certainly welcome any comments. I just have one, just based on looking at the plan on your C2, it appears that lot A has that retention basin kind of blocked out of it. Is that a separate <coughs> property that's not part of lot A? It's an easement, sir. There's a, there's a drainage easement around the basin, so it is, it is part of lot A, but the basin is contained within easement. Yeah. Okay. Because I guess my only concern would be that the owner of lot A not know what it is, the function of it, because it's not defined as a riprap typical retention pond, because it looks nicer, mm -hmm. but that they utilize it for something different. Mm -hmm. Horseshoe pits. Uh, I don't, <laughs> I, I, I think it's been explicitly made clear to them, I, you as the owner, I think, right. nod, yes, yeah. yes. Well, the town would have an easement to Is it your property? That's correct. Is so, that your house lot, Ron, or is that, sorry. is that your house lot, or is that somebody no. else? No, that, that's uh, another owner. Okay. But they're also aware that there's a buffer there between the, the where the edge of the building could be and where the retention, the rain garden is, because yeah. uh, my understanding is that's uh, considered a wetland area, so there had to be a buffer there. And they've never touched any of the vegetation. And they know that. They're aware yeah. of that. And, okay. and to John's question, as we uh, seek the acceptance through the selectmen and the planning board, the town will take over the ship of that. The right of way. That's correct. Yeah. Phil, you mentioned earlier that you had something from the planning board. Did they issue something in writing? Uh, we, I don't. What I mentioned is that they reviewed it. So okay. we had some discussion as to whether somebody certified it, which they did through the planning department. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been given the lot releases. I don't have a document. I went back to look through the files for it for yep. tonight. Yep. I didn't have anything I could put my hand on very cleanly. Okay. Uh, you know, if we want to close the book, I can talk to them in the morning and see what we can dig up. 
I know at the same time they've opened their books, because this is an older project, as we're going for the street acceptance, they've opened their books to confirm that we have satisfied all of their conditions, and so far we have. Otherwise, we couldn't have filed for acceptance with the selectmen. Okay. I just don't have a final sign-off letter saying, good, 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 check the box. Okay, all right, because that would be helpful if we had that, because that would sort of answer our, my questions anyway about the drainage, because they would look at that specifically. I'm looking at it more broadly, but they would certainly look at it very specifically, because you know, they want to make sure that downstream Highland Road doesn't get flooded out. Well, that's, that's the issue, as you can imagine. You know, when you have a subdivision, especially one where we were very public about it, is that we would seek acceptance at the end. The town is looking very, very closely at it to make sure it all passes muster, because otherwise, if there's a skeleton buried in the ground, proverbially, you're going to own it. You know, and that, the town's right. not going to let that happen. Right. And just to remind the commission that originally this property was under the um, control or the natural heritage did have jurisdiction over it but Phil is right um, it, it came off the map so even though the order of conditions did require this deed restriction to satisfy natural heritage now that it's come off natural heritage I don't know that we want to enforce that we could but do we want to if it's no longer habitat nope that was my thought, but I just want to make sure that the commission is clear about that, that there is that issue. Anyone else? Yeah. Um, only other concern is, are there any other orders of conditions opened for any of the other lots that would be possibly viewed as an overlap? We went through this at uh, the settlement, how they kind right. of had some right. fuzzy right. areas where lots were included in drainage areas, so we just... Mm -hmm. I'm satisfied with the work, and if I make a motion, I just want to make sure that it doesn't have an overlapping condition somewhere else. No, there was. Okay. Because there should have been a filing for maybe one or two of these houses, because they're within a hundred feet. Uh, I, you mean like a lot A? Uh, well, I don't know what. Yeah. This, yeah. this lot one a here. The only one, and this then, one here, number two. Right. And uh, I, I remember the builder calling me one morning and he said there was a problem and I went up there and what happened is they couldn't get the separation they couldn't get the, the hundred feet they needed so um, I had Mr. Chamberlain and I had Nate Darling come up and we, we had a powwow and what had happened is the engineer was using the wrong starting point for measuring so once that got cleared up then we, we had the separation that was so the house is out a, of the buffer zone yes Correct, right. But I don't believe there was ever a separate filing and nobody ever said anything or no. requested it. Okay. Very good. Yeah. And we weren't the okay. engineer using the wrong baseline. Somebody else, just for the record. <laughs> <laughs> Duly noted. <laughs> Joe? And as the person who lives across the street and keeps a close eye on that. No. <laughs> in fact, she'll remain nameless. Where, where the, when they rebuilt Highland Road, there were so two places they yourself. built up quite a no, bit. Not. Down the bottom near the pond, which mm -hmm. always flooded, right. and that area right there, which always flooded. So I always kept an eye on that, and every rainstorm we've ever had, yeah. No problem. Yeah, no problem whatsoever. Yeah, we, we've we've yeah. got the we've got time on our side, and that it's been there for ten years now, and we've yeah. we've gone through some pretty substantial Rain. storms, well, fast went, moving storms. They went through the flooding. They went well, through the flooding with no trouble. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I've never had any trouble up there. So to date, we're good. Okay. All right. Entertain a good. motion. Yep. Make a motion to close the hearing and issue a uh, certificate of compliance. For second, Setucket Trail, SE 192-541. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Mr. Paris. Thank you. Thank you, George. Thank you. <laughs> I forget how sensitive these mics are sometimes.
quick. All right, next item on the agenda. Another certificate of compliance. This time for 225 Hemlock Shore Road. I don't know if anybody came. No one here for that? Okay. We can just discuss it then. Yep. Go ahead. Um, did I bring the plan? I don't know if I brought the plan. Um, essentially, it's an addition on an existing single family home. And I went down there today, and it looks good. The addition was built per the plan. What I did find, which is not on the plan, is there's a nice big patio, and there's a nice like boat ramp that goes down into the pond. And it doesn't show on the plan. It doesn't show um, anywhere on this plan. There was no as-built submitted with this one either. Um, so. Although I don't have any problem with issuing the certificate of compliance for the construction of the addition, it seems that there was some work done along the shoreline which was not permitted. Unless someone Plus is was there before. remembering of 225 um, Hemlock Shores. Well, There's a nice deck and nice boat ramp and it's like, ooh. Bob, you were looking for a filing for that. Did you find anything? Um, I didn't. I don't know if it went over. No. It did have any success. Well, no. I know we've got a file because we looked at it when I went out there uh, several months ago. Sure. So it's buried in our archives somewhere. Okay. I just want to bring that up for the commissions. You know, I mean, this certificate requests, you know, a certificate on a different aspect of this single family home site. Um, but it's just what I happened to notice, and when I came back, it's not shown on the plan. Otherwise, Fine. It's all vegetated. It's nice. You know, it looks good. It looks well, great. You could always request that they come in and maybe, I don't know, give us a revised plan or, or I'm just thinking out loud here. Yeah. Because I mean, we're just issuing a certificate of compliance for the, for the, for the construction. For the, for the, the construction the structure. Right. Spelled out in the, uh, in the RDA. Yeah. Right. Or not RDA. It was in the, in the yeah, but does that set a precedent that people could do work and just... Well, the question is, was the work already done? Or, uh, well, right was now. the work permitted, right? I mean, that, when I saw it, I'm yeah. like, oh, okay, let's look at the plan of record. It's not on the plan. It's not, you know, the proposed... Yeah, it's new, it's new work. The, yeah, it's new. This says proposed addition. This was the plan of record yeah. when you guys issued the order, and it shows a sandbox. So when I went out there, it's like, oh, there's no sandbox, but there's a nice deck and a nice boat ramp. And, you know, it looks brand new. It looks like it's beautiful. It's like, wow, that's really nice. I wonder if that was permitted. So that's my only question. It's paved into the lake. Well, it's there's a, like a deck that kind of sits on the on the wall, and then there's this ramp. So that's the boat launch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that goes right, you know, and the waves are splashing up. So I didn't see the bottom of it, but I'm like, wow. You know, so it's definitely something that should have gotten a permit and a Chapter 91 license. I was just curious whether I couldn't find anything, but I was thinking maybe one of you folks might remember. Can I see the plan? Sure. So you saw that boat ramp. Yeah. It's pretty impressive. It looks like it's made out of marble. It's like, that. you know, slabs of... I'm trying kind of to remember like, this. Yeah. Like, so I raise it because, you know, it's come to my attention. Well, it does say there's a proposed stone patio and a proposed deck. That's way up there. Yeah, okay. this one is right on the... Oh, right. See, yeah, see where it says sandbox? Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, it's right there. Existing retainer wall, Edge Pond. I the name. Is there some practice that you have done in the past where, you know, you find these things that were not permitted or is... Well, we generally would inquire of the applicant, oh, whoa, gee, oh. you get any paperwork on this? Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. we do the same thing that, you know, the <coughs> building inspector or the wiring inspector or the okay. plumbing inspector no, would do. Ooh, when was that done? Yeah, this okay, is, uh, okay, I can do that. We've yeah. gone back and asked them to amend the filing to include right. work that was in the... Right. 
the this original source. description. Right. That's it's another way to do it. With the white trim. And they had it on. In general, for the protection of the landowner, no, I think I they want everything that's on the property to be but I don't think in the checked and approved yeah. box. Yeah, yeah but I you know, I mean, let's just say they, they, they went and did it without a permit, then there would be no record of, you know, it's not, it doesn't show up on the deed anywhere, and so no one's going to question it. You know, you know, if they were to sell it, say someone, you know, on the other hand, if they sell it and the property, new property owner says, well, what about that? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's maybe what happens there. Parallel with the lake. So, I don't know how to address it. I, I'm certainly willing to contact him and say, you know, did you know that you built, <laughs> did you know that you put that in? I, I would say that we would, you know, issue the certificate of compliance, but then contact the person and say, hey, we could help but notice. Come on. You know, we can't seem to find any in your file on this work. One way or another, this kind of like continue it and, and ask them to come in or to give us some information in the next two weeks. Or we, we close it out and, and do what you're saying. Say, oh, by the way, we noticed this and uh, it may require additional filings. Mm -hmm. okay. oh, I guess whatever, whatever is the pleasure of the, the commission. Mm -hmm. What are you finding there, John? Anything good? We're trying to visualize trying to what house it is to get out. Yeah, oh. we just figure it out. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's a well well maintained property. Very much so. But I guess I just don't want to make a motion that adopts work that wasn't permitted. Like our board is like many other boards. Our decisions do not set precedent. So we don't have to worry about that. I mean if if we're Voting on a certificate of compliance for the addition and what they pulled the permit for, I'm comfortable with that. Yeah, because that's that's been done, and that's separate from any from other previous work. Else. Right. So we've got two ways to handle it. One is to issue the certificate and, and give him a call and just remind him that you know it came to our attention. Please let us know. The other thing is to hold off on the certificate until we get some answers. So well, I I I don't think. I, I would prefer we vote on the certificate tonight mm -hmm. and put that to, to bed because yep. one thing doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the right. other. Then we can make inquiries and they may have a perfectly good, reasonable mm -hmm. explanation for it. So I, I'll make a motion to close. close the hearing, issue a certificate of compliance for 225 Hemlock Shore Road, file number SE192-77, is it just a nine? Seven seven nine. Yeah. Seven seven nine. Second. Okay, we Would you specify that it was for the addition to the house? Right. For for what they for the order of conditions that was okay. filed. So a complete certificate. I'm sorry, John. I don't mean to interrupt, but is that what you're recommending? A, a complete certificate, certificate of compliance for the order of conditions that was issued to them for that project. For the work under that order of conditions. Right. So we have a motion and second, or what the discussion? We, I did second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Signature page. <clears throat> so I'll contact him then. Had, had you actually had any conversation with them, or, or did it just submit the request? Just, just submit the. They submitted it, and when I went out there today, um, I did knock on the door. The, did someone did answer, and I told them who I was, and they said, "Okay, fine." But I didn't go back and okay. talk to that right. person about what I. I just. I didn't. Gotcha. I could have, but I didn't. I don't know if that person would have been helpful, but. Oh, did you guys all sign this? No. Nope. Sorry, we were I'm about putting to. it away before it gets signed. Okay, next we 
have another certificate? Yep, steer of compliance for lot E, number 27 and 31, commercial drive. Oh, this is for <laughs> partial. I'm going to recuse yeah. myself. All right. Is that correct? It's partial? It is partial. That's correct. No big colored maps for us here? I, I highlighted two buildings. Yeah, we, yeah, we have that. Yeah, so uh, good evening, Jamie Bissonette, Zenith Consulting Engineers. Uh, we're looking for a partial certificate of compliance for the first two buildings um, that contain units 1 through 5 and then 6 through 12 on Lot E, Riverside Drive. Um, as you know, there's four buildings that were permitted um, along with drainage, parking, etc. Um, as the project goes, with the, each building's being constructed and sold, and uh, bank financing requires, in a, in a lot of cases, certificates uh, be issued. While we have uh, a lot of work still to do on the overall Bingo. site, um, we still have two complete buildings with 14 units still under the existing order with, um, with this summer and spring, hopefully, to wrap the majority of that up. So at this time, we're requesting a partial for the first two buildings with units one all the way through 12 uh, so that we can continue on with the process of construction and sales. I didn't bring the plan with me either. I, I have one right here. Okay, good. Thank you. I'm looking for it. I'm going to I left it in my office. And I only brought one. I apologize. But the two buildings highlighted in blue. Uh, the resource area wraps around the detention basin in the back, and our 100-foot buffer runs uh, in this vicinity over in here. Right. Um, so while the two buildings are not in the buffer zone, the, the septic system with grading, which we're still finishing up, we, we plan on stabilizing this in the spring right now, seed will not germinate. Mm -hmm. uh, but, and, and we're still working on the parking, and I believe that we're starting uh, construction on that, and this will be the last unit to be constructed. Mm -hmm. Uh, so again, we're, we're looking for the sign-off on these two buildings in particular. It's okay. Uh, oh, we're in. I, I did go out there today, Jamie. This one looks complete, one through five. This one, it's, it's you know, it's still got the green paper. It's nearly, it's not complete. It is. It's not a completed unit yet. What we yeah. want, it, what, and that's why we filed it in two separate documents. If the commission is not okay with, we wanted to try to get both done at the same time as far as the release with one meeting. If the commission is not comfortable with the second building release, we can come back to a subsequent meeting for it. Right. Um, it, a lot of those units are, are pre-sold. We have the septic system completed. The water's tied in. Um, so we were kind of trying to eliminate coming back to a second meeting. Okay. And you, you raised some valid points, which is that these two buildings are really outside of our jurisdiction. That's yes. number one. However... Where is the line in relation? It's well back into the leaching field, yeah. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, it's, it's oh, really, this is it here. Yeah. It's yeah. But, okay. I mean, the site is totally bare. You know, there's not a speck of vegetation there, like, you, you know, because you can't see it at this time of year. Correct. Um, I walked down and looked at the hay bale line. That, that at this corner here, it's, it's, no, it's no longer there. Those two big uh, silt sacks that you have out there? Sure. They're either buried under fill filled or... Up. Filled up. But they're not visible. I there's a lot of... I think it's uh, stump grounds. We yeah. We spread some stump grounds. Yeah. There's a lot of debris that's down in the wetland, like stuff that's either blown down or washed down the hill. Okay. So I do have some concerns about the wetland because of the lack of the erosion control and the debris that's in there. Okay. But <coughs> this work is outside of jurisdiction. So, you know, it makes it difficult for us because, you know, let's just say we sign off on all four buildings. Yeah, no, we, we have no way of... Uh, having any control over what happens down here, which is where our jurisdiction is. So no, completely understood. What, what we're looking to do is, uh, before we f get the final sign-off on the fourth building, we're get, we plan on having the entire site stabilized and completed. Uh, the game plan is um, possibly with building three this spring to summer coming back and looking for a partial release. Building four being the last building, we won't be back for a, a full release until everything is stabilized and completed. Were the stump grindings kind of like erosion control? They were. There's such okay. steep slopes that yeah. we put those in because we got we got large rainfalls this okay. fall, 
And, yeah. and we found that the best way to contain the, the open earth, since seed wouldn't take, was the stump grindings. So we imported them and put them on the slope to avoid erosion. Right, I saw that. We also, that. in some cases, had to double up and put, double up silt socks and put in hay bales. Um, it, it's been challenging. There's no question we've had unprecedented water in the fall. But I think overall, um, we managed managed very well. We do have an active SWIP. So we have somebody that's constantly going and checking. So we'll check with them and find out exactly what's going yeah, on. Yeah, if that's... Yep, I that's mean, not a problem. I'll check with them tomorrow. So so I'm just thinking out loud here that, you know, it, it puts the commission in a difficult position because 99% of the work on this is really not even in our jurisdiction. Mm. Yet, you're pr you know, the plans that you filed with us, so, you know, you're not doing yourself any favors by having this work show mm -hmm. and asking for our permission sure. and then coming back to us and I'm saying, well, it's outside of our jurisdiction. Yeah, the, the well, the, yeah, the jurisdiction on the part that we filed for the notice was for the septic and the grading. Right. Unfortunately, the, the entire lot is referenced on the order. So mm -hmm. when, when you reference it, the attorneys are looking for the clarification that the units are released. So while we concede yeah. that the units are not subject to jurisdiction, we still need that release and understanding that you guys have to protect the town's interest in the work that is in the buffer or jurisdiction. Right. Then that's why we're only requesting the punishment. Exactly. Well, that, that, that's, that's a given. That's a yep. given. But my point is maybe the next time you do a filing, you only include what's relevant. <laughs> we, can't, we did. We only, we only included the septic itself in the grading. But it's, it's not a subdivision. It's one parcel, It is. Right? It's one right. parcel. It's one right. lot. So it's all on the parcel. I know, but the work, you know, you, you, you could have just given us a plan that says, we're just going to do grading down here. Yeah. That's all. That's, well, our plan Because is now you're coming back for yeah. a release, and I'm saying, well, you know. Why are we even looking at it? We're not, we're not it's asking. really not a release. It's just documentation for the bank that says we're the releasing those buildings out of right. the purview. Hmm. Yeah, but like I said, you know, the, there's no, the grading isn't done, you know, around these buildings. The vegetation isn't there. So, frankly, if but, this were in jurisdiction, I would say we can't issue a yeah. certificate of compliance. That's not I, I what we're issuing. Time, but that's not what we're issuing the release on. Well, the buildings. Just, yeah. just the buildings. Just the buildings. Right. Correct. But what you're saying is, if you had done it in, in you know, in, in sections, so that you know, the first, the first pass was just the grading plan, mm -hmm. you know, and then ask for a release on that. Right. Right. Yes. Right. Because you didn't even need to show us this work. Yeah. Is what I'm saying. Uh, you, you know what I mean? You I, didn't need to show it because we, we, we don't care what happens up there. Yeah. No, I, I understand that. We, we typically submit a complete plan with our filing. Mm -hmm. Uh, to, to justify the work that's being done in the buffer. I mean, just like most of the plans in front of us tonight, there's work out and within. We're only asking for the release on those units purely right. because they're referenced on the order itself. Right, and, and we see this all the time where we don't see somebody look for their compliance until they sell the house mm -hmm. because now the bank wants... Right. And they're trying to sell properties outside of the buffer zone, but it's on a property of the wetlands. 200 and something feet away, right. but the bank just won't release it. So correct. You're right. just looking for a piece of paper to show the bank. Right. It's not closing out the order of conditions. Correct. Right. No, I. All it is is a document to show the bank to release a mortgage. It's on those 12 units that are outside of the buffer. We're not asking. Uh, it's not a full certificate, obviously. Right. right. That's so I think to. Oh, we have no problem with that myself, but mm -hmm. I think out of the agent's concern, would you say that when you do come back, that we would see. For, to just say to release building three, mm -hmm. lot uh, units 13 through whatever, yep. that we would see 85% of the grading and plantings complete by then? I mean, 85? I, I don't know. I, I, give me a percentage that we're going to see uh, so this, below so those buildings anyway. The, the game plan is this spring we're going to have the leaching fields installed. Um, but we can't stabilize over the top. We're going to be test firing the pumps hopefully later this week because they're finishing the electrical connections. Um, once the pump testing is done, they can set the D box cover for a final and then backfill over it. Then loam and seed we wouldn't bring in until right. after the spring rains. Right. We get the lawn. And I'm done. solely talking about when you come back. If, yep. we, if we approve this tonight, 
Yeah. Have you come back to get the third building? I think that partial. I, oh, well, I, the, the, the leaching field in there? Maybe? Yes. Oh, the, yeah. the whole leaching field yeah, area will that. be stabilized in the spring. As soon as the weather. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yep. And again, I'm not looking for that mm -hmm. for you were asking tonight, no, but, but I'm just saying. I thought you Lenora has the whole concerns. site's got to be 85 percent complete. When you come back to release the third building. All right. right. That area that we're talking about that's will all be, yeah. Be right. Good. And the overall right. side so probably close we, to So when you come feet. back, yep. she's going to look and she's going to be able to see most of the work in the buffer zone and everything from building three to building one is wrapped up. Yeah. When you come back and say, I need another partial, yeah. darn bank. And right. Yeah, but but and, and, and that kind of leads me to my question, which is, okay, let's just say, you know, at some point, we you know, we release one, two, three, and four, okay? That's, so, we're done then. Yeah, but that's my problem because he's done. But but, but what if, but what about if this isn't you know fully? We don't, we don't release it then. Right. Yeah, but that goes. But back the work is outside of 100 feet again. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but that goes back to your point of not showing the building. That's right. So it, I mean, to us in this case, could we ask for that? We would. That's not our game plan. Our game plan is to be finished at the final building. Come in for one final, you know. Here's our finished product. Right. You know, issue us so, our final one. So when you come in for building four, you'll yep. be looking for your certificate of compliance. The complete one, correct. No longer partials. No. Correct. And everything will be done at that point, in or out of the buffer that's, zone. That's the game plan, yes. Okay. That's the plan. Well, we're here tonight. And I, I, I think building one, you know, this first one looks like it's complete, but this one, it's, it's still wrapped in what, Tyvek or something? I mean, it's, yeah, it's what, not... What is it now? Well... Why not go for a certificate for all of them? I mean, it's kind of like, well, they're outside of jurisdiction. I mean, it's, <laughs> to me, it's well, like. because, it, I mean, I, I don't see a point because the site's not settled the way it should be. Why would I try to get it complete? Well, I guess that's my problem initially is that you have work that we don't have any say over because you're outside of the buffer zone. Right. So in good faith, we're coming to you and saying, this is what we intend to do. Yeah, but it's... You want to make a bank's lawyers happy. I have to. I yeah, that's have to. Yeah. Right, 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 so, right, right. I mean, I would say to do those, those two buildings. Okay. And just, and just the buildings. Do just those buildings. What, yeah. You know, whatever right. they want. Yeah. Okay. I have a certificate. Okay, that's fine. I just think it really confuses matters. You're, you're coming to us. So what would be clear? If we came to you with a, just a plan and no buildings on it? Yeah, that's right. what I was saying with before. Whatever's in our jurisdiction. Okay, so we'll yeah. do that on, on the next step. All right. Because you're putting yourself in this, you're putting yourself in a catch-22. You're yeah. coming to us now All saying, right. we need a certificate of compliance. And I'm saying, you didn't need to even show it. Yeah. We're, we're being told by the attorneys that we need a certificate of compliance. Yeah, and, because uh, you showed it. And what we have done in the past, mm -hmm. whenever an applicant or a lawyer says, you know, we need it. Give me the wording. Mm -hmm. So give me the wording that will make you happy. And if it, if we agree with that wording, then everyone's happy. Right, right, right. Let yeah, me ask, this partial order of, uh, partial certificate of compliance, if we vote to issue that, it's not something that gets filed at the Registry of Deeds. They're it's, not going to. It is. Okay. is it? Yeah, that's going to be. That's yeah. why they want it. Yep. Yeah, what it does is it, it takes what would essentially be almost like a, an attachment to the order of conditions on this site, and it says these units, 1 through 12, now are not part of that order of conditions. Not the entire lot. Not Which the they entire aren't entire. anyway, but Correct. They, they are, this, but they aren't. This is a formality. They, they're part of the filing, but they're out of the buffer zone. It's lot E. So the attorneys, it's however they read it. Even if I cut off the rest, they still could ask for us to come and make sure that we got those buildings released. I don't, I it would be through someone else, though, because we don't have jurisdiction over it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we, you know, you could go to planning board or something. Wait, you know, but as long as there's an order of conditions, it has to be in the correct. Right, I get that, but you get what I'm saying, right? Yeah. That the work is, you, you know, you put yourself in this catch-22 by saying, well, this work here, it's really not in our jurisdiction, but right. yeah, you could say some the same thing about all four buildings, regardless right. of their stage of completion. You right. say, well, it doesn't matter. Right, and that's where I—that's where I'm really troubled because if they want, you know, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but should they come back and all four buildings are released, the bank says, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Meanwhile, we don't have anything that says, you know, you know, so it, it's not a good approach here. I'm, I'm okay. I'm I'm 
baffled. So <laughs> you don't understand that? No, no, not at all. Why would you show work that's beyond jurisdiction? Why would you come to us for a permit when you don't need that permit? I think every plan shows a hundred foot buffer and work beyond it. We pay a fee for the work that's in the buffer. And right. we describe that as the work. That is the work. Right. If an attorney says, please get this taken out of the order because the order's written for the property, you know, then we get the release. That's all we're here for tonight. We're right. not saying that those buildings are subject to the act. We don't no, believe they no are. We know that. they're not. There's they're no not. question about that. But if that, you want James. us to go to the attorneys and say, well, yeah, they wouldn't issue them, then I, I, we'd be in a tough spot. We're not saying we're not going to issue it. I'm saying, you know, just give us I don't stuff know. that's I in jurisdiction. Really don't I don't understand. Give, give, whatever's within 100 feet, that's all you have you to show. You don't want a complete site plan. We don't need it. Don't need it. We don't need it. All right. Well, we'll do that next time. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I'm yeah the, okay. the, po the point. I'll, I'll show you. What yeah. The, the point is, <laughs> this attorney wants a certificate of compliance on two buildings that we have no authority over. That's Correct. right. Correct. So we're being I'll asked. Know. We have an order of conditions, conditions with your board. Yeah. For on this whole project. On the whole project. Correct. So, yeah. And that's the way you filed it. Make Had the you motion. filed it without the buildings, <laughs> you wouldn't be here. Well, we would laugh at him. We would he laugh would. at him for he coming with the incomplete plan. No, that, if, if <laughs> I just, no way that we would we, we would say no way. Yeah. Show us all your work. Absolutely. You know, okay. We would we would uh, demand I, I, that okay. those buildings I, I be would, on that plan. I would say I would say differently, but that's your call. So you would say from now on for me just to cut all of the topography and everything over 100 feet off. You can do that you because but that's, I have that's no the right preferred method. That, well, it saves you from having to deal with this. Not the preferred, but in a situation like this, where there is... It's, like, it's, it's like a subdivision, right? You're going to, you know, the, the road goes in. Do you add in all the houses? Sometimes no. we're asked to. Sometimes you do. And that's when you get in trouble. But if you didn't do that, mm -hmm. if you just did the roadway, then you get a certificate for the roadway and let the home, you know, because now, you, you know, you, you put, you, you've put yourself in this position, and that's fine, and I, I have no qualms about it. I am concerned, however, that at some point we're not going to release these other four without knowing that this well, area I that is a jurisdiction. That. I think yeah. they agree to that. We, we wouldn't release right. the final I wouldn't ask right. building right. without right. final completion. Right. Okay. But we're here tonight, and this is... Let's do it. Okay. I, I'd like to make a motion, but I just want to entertain one other aspect of this, just for future knowledge. Would it make sense, or would it be too cumbersome to ask for an amendment to the notice of intent? That would be too cumbersome, yeah. yeah. That's okay. not a whole new paper trail. Would that... you agree with that, Jamie? An amendment to, to the notice? To, to amend the, the, the order of conditions to remove the building from the order, so to speak. It, and again, I'm just... Uh, right. I think the partial release here was like, yep. Yeah. I understand, yeah. but I'm yeah. just saying in right. a future filing to see, say... See, what ends up happening is the attorney sees, when they look at it, they see an order of conditions with the address. And that's all they see. They don't look and read through the definition of what was actually permitted. They see a site, they want to make sure that, right. that they're released on it. That's why if I, even if I hadn't shown the buildings, it would still say lot E, and it would still have an order of conditions, and I'd still be in front of you. The attorney would ask And those buildings are on lot E? They are on lot E. Lot E is in, is the first thing that it says. It's lot E, Lake Right, Lake. right. So, so all we're releasing is buildings 1 through 5 and 6 all, through 12. Exactly. Specific right. only to those lot numbers or building numbers not to do with... Right. Correct. The outside parameters of the project. We understand that. Yes. So right. just, and, and I believe I would be here even if I only showed the septic part. The attorneys would still have it linked in as an order of conditions for Lottie, and they would still be asking to make sure that they're covered. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not real common now, but it used to be fairly common with subdivisions in Lakeville. The, the subdivision would go in, and we'd have an order of conditions on the roadway and drainage. Mm -hmm. And six lots in to be someone building a house and all of a sudden the lawyer wants a, a certificate of compliance on the roadway yep and we're going this has got nothing to do with that yes mm -hmm. but exactly. my client has to drive over that roadway to get to you know and i'd say 
we, we ended up writing what, what I guess they call in the trade a comfort letter. Yes, yeah. The, I've seen many of those. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And it basically right. would say that uh, this filing, this, this order of conditions, should, have no, should be no impediment to the construction and sale of comfort that. Comfort letters That's suffice here? That's so almost a, no, right. no, you would, wouldn't even bother with that. All we have to do is take right. in these two buildings. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion if you'll entertain it, Mr. Yes. Chair. A uh, motion to issue, a, do we close the hearing on this for what it's been applied for? We don't close the hearing, it's just a... Okay. Um, so I make a motion right. to issue a partial certificate of compliance for only units 1 through 5 and 6 through 12 of Landing Way, uh, SE 192-813, also known as... 27 and 31 Commercial Drive. Second. Okay. No more discussion. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank I you. Have a Thank signature you. page. Let's hope it's less painful next time. Yeah. Well, like you say, we went through it with that <laughs> subdivision. Oh. Going back with those individual lots that. Right. Oh, right. just, it and can be a nightmare. When the lawyers uh, stepped yeah. in and wanted. Uh, one You're trying to explain it's got that roadway's yeah. got nothing to do with that house lot. Yeah. This is but unless there's a piece of paper saying I that, they're not happy. Yeah. Well, they're doing due diligence for their client, is what it is. Well, the way it's going in this direction, you've got us going <laughs> in the other direction. direction. Yeah. And it's, it's hard to bend. And, it's crazy. and frankly, just because they ask for it doesn't mean that they, they, can get they know right. what they're exactly. doing. You know, I mean, nothing. You know, I, we just have different objectives. Right, right. exactly. It's a different objective. John, don't sign that one when it comes no, down, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, go ahead, sign it, sign it. He actually could sign if we needed to. Yes, he could. Yes. He just didn't by vote. That, by right. that law of necessity, right? Yes. By the law of necessity, yep. Okay. That's all the permits I have prepared. That's all our signatures. So that's all our hearings for tonight. Okay, good. So we'll move on to new business. And Mike, I think you're on next. Oh, okay. All right, I am uh, Martha Schroeder, better known as Mike. I'm here for the Open Space Committee and also as a private individual. I'll do the open space business to start with. Uh, the first item is that we are as we are wondering, because it is a large part of Lakeville's open space, what is going on with Vigors Park? Like. But, oh, rattling Behind paper. It. Behind it. There you go. There you go. You want me to start again? No, go ahead. No, you're, you're right. Uh, so my question for you is, what's going on with Vigors Park? Who is managing it? Is Sarah Kakulovich still in town? Is she doing it? Um, What's happening? Let me let me answer that. Um, first of all, Sarah is not in town. Um, we did reach out to her, and she said she was still interested, but had no way of of doing so. So she is no longer part of the the commission. Uh, so I guess that means there is no general oversight. Uh, what I did mention to the rest of the commissioners a few a few meetings back. Uh, I have some certain things I'd like to bring before the, the commission. One of them is, what are we going to do with Biggers? Who's going to oversee it? Uh, maybe we need to go out there and, and do a little uh, inspection to make sure it's not being damaged in any way uh, and decide what it is uh, we want to do and who's going to do it. All right, is this, uh, I, was it referred to as the scout house? Is that complete? Yes. Was the scout house or then the cowboy shack? Originally, yeah. That is completed. It's, as far as I know, it's... it's Work has been completed, yes. Complete, yeah. yeah. Okay. So if you could get back to us. Absolutely. Um, if you want our help in any way, let us know. Mm -hmm. All right, the second open space uh, bit of business was, at some point we would like to come to your meeting, just and have a kind of a joint meeting to find out what, uh, just if you have any, uh, let us... If, if you have any concerns, open space-wise, that are going on, if we have any conservation concerns, just so that we could communicate between boards, so if we could schedule that at some time. 
Maybe that's something we could set up with you, Lenore. Now, there's a meeting Saturday at the library. Yes, that's that's the master plan. That's the master Are you going to be at that one? Oh, you bet. Yeah, I'm going to be at that one also. Yeah, because we're dealing with open space yes, in that yes, segment. Right. Yeah, yeah uh, I'd be happy to do that. I, I, I'm relatively new to the town of Lakeville, so I'm not familiar with this vigorous property, um, but I'd be happy to sit down and, and uh, address any concerns that you have, Well, that was your board had. For the, the Vigors issues. thing and meeting with you and having our board meet with you are really two different things, although Vigors could be a part of it. But uh, just that we, m many of our many members on the board now are new. They're just trying to get, get a feel about what's going on in the town, who does what, and I think they would just like to, to have a chance to meet you to, um, uh, and to have you meet us and, and see what, how we can help you. How, and, do you, guys, do you have a need for uh, for um, space? I'm trying to avoid saying space. Uh, for a place to, to uh, for projects or whatever, for meetings or, or. Do we have a particular place? Yeah. Uh, would you have a use for the for the biggest property or the the building itself? Uh, not that we know of. No? Um, okay. uh, it's something to think to about. think about. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's just there. I'd hate to it's go. it's it's just there, but it ought to be utilized in, in, yeah. in some way. So, okay. All right. So those were the two things for the open space. I'm now speaking as just Martha Schroeder, Three River Bend, Lakeville. Um, but also, uh, I guess this kind of goes back to my formerly being a member of this of this board. We gave special permission to the park department to mow at John Pond Park. There were conditions that were put on that because the stream is, was a, um, a perennial stream and it was also turtle habitat, a, a box turtle habitat. I don't know if it's still within one of those uh, um, polygons or not. However, they were told they could only mow early spring before the turtles moved. Last year, and maybe years before that, but particularly last year, I noticed it was being mowed all the way down to the water's edge all year long. In previous years, when it was allowed to grow during the season, it grew up with low vegetation, which should not have been an issue of, of um, I think people were concerned of, uh, for security for children. Mm -hmm. yep. um, but the vegetation grew up about this high. It was mostly um, uh, Joe Pieweed butterfly habitat, it was beautiful, I've got lots of pictures of it, but they've been cutting it down so now it's just grass. Um, so, I, it seemed to me perhaps that this is the board that ought to be enforcing that. Um, I don't know. Who mows it, do you know? The highway department, park department. Uh, yeah, or, it's just general. Or, would it be highway department or yeah. park, park department? Park department. It's the highway department. Highway department. It would be probably under the orders of the park department, but it is uh, the ruling is is basically a, a um, um, natural heritage ruling that, mm -hmm. that it's not supposed yep. to be mowed, yep. and I think that's so that's kind of in your jurisdiction. So I did want to mention that. Have you spoken to anybody at the? Um... I'm speaking to you. <laughs> no, I'm just <laughs> I haven't what... spoken to anybody else. Okay. No. Well, then we should contact highway department yeah. and say you know. Because they, they, we got a new guy there who's probably in a way, and a lot of the guys that worked there for years that knew about this stuff have all retired in the past couple of yes, years. Yes, yes. So you got a bunch of new do, people, know. you know. That's right. Yeah. And if you work in the highway department and you ride a mower, yeah. everything we'll looks like it should over. be mowed. That's we'll turn over yes. is difficult. <laughs> yes. Tell me yeah. about it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we've had problems in the past uh, with overdoing it in, in different different areas, so, uh, crossings, and no. um, so. Yeah. We try it verbally, or if that doesn't work, maybe send them a letter that says, you know, there have been concerns, and we just want to remind them of what. Uh, I think it should be are. in the form of written communication, yeah. okay. so there's a record of it. Now so you, this is something you and I can work on the wording, right. perhaps. Okay. So I can count on you guys to do to, to take action. We will follow right. up on that. Thank sure. you very much. That's all right. that's all. So Lenore, I will contact you about possibly setting up a joint meeting. Sure. Um, you know, we, we meet here regularly. This is when you wanted to meet with all the members. You're welcome to come into my office anytime, but yes. you know, as yes. a board, well, they a meet. It was a joint board meeting. Right? Okay, so it would be at our one of our regularly scheduled yes, meetings. Yes, just it would be just a part of the meeting. It wouldn't okay. have to be that that long. Yeah, absolutely. All right, thank you very much. You're Thanks, welcome. Thank right. you.
right. That's it. Uh, meeting schedule. But I thought we already did we that. Did, we, we, we did it. That. We approved that in yeah. the last meeting. Right. So I thought. So we're good yeah. at that. We have minutes to do. Uh, um, not on there, we do. I didn't print them. Yeah. Okay. She did. Not on yeah, but yes, she did. We do have minutes. Uh, yeah, Laurie sent us. Minutes of January 8th. The one from last time is extremely short. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and we have Second. January 8th and the, the what's the other one? The 22nd? 22nd and February 12th. February 12th. Okay. The January 8th one was one I had a question on. Um, we were discussing 475 Kenneth Welch Drive. The amendment? There was an amendment? Yeah. The, yeah. They yeah. came in, they, they asked, the engineer was in asking for an amendment. They were going to be a two-story building. It's now knocked down to a one-story building. They were going to enlarge the dumpster pad. Right. And the sidewalk's going to be taken away. Then it says here, the footprint will be 250 square feet larger and impervious. Mm -hmm they will be getting closer to border new vegetated wetlands. And then in the next paragraph, Chairman Bouchard said that since the footprint isn't changing, <laughs> he didn't think it would call for an amended order of conditions. And I think it should read, since the footprint is it changing, is changing. It's it changing. should call for an amended order of conditions. I, I would That's think that because otherwise well, those two expressions like are contradictory. Okay. But did we issue an amended order of conditions? No. We did not. No, we agreed, as I recall, that it was just a field change, if you will. Mm -hmm. We were not going to make them go through the process. You have a popular of field amendment. adjustment, right? right. <laughs> well, we if, didn't if you require. look down below, it says voted to accept the revised plan for 475, right. Right. showing a larger dumpster pad. Yes, yeah. the larger yeah. dumpster reduction pad, two -story but a reduction one. from two story to, to one, one story. Right. right. So just, it just, Okay. Struck me as you know contradictory there. Yes, it but we because but we did not. No, we didn't require an amended order. Okay, we didn't require. Okay. So that's got to be changed. Okay, is changing. Not, not mm. changing. And I think in the three sets of minutes, that was the only thing I noted. Anybody else have any changes? Or? No, I had. The all right, so um, motion from someone to approve those minutes? Uh, the, the January 8th? January 8th. I make a motion that we approve the, mean, the minutes of the meeting of January 8th, 2019 second. as amended. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So, Margarita, you want to get rid of February tw uh, 12th? Did anyone yeah, have no changes? I'll make a motion to accept the meeting minutes for February 12th unchanged. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And that's it, right? 22nd. January, January 22nd. 22nd. Which I wasn't asked. Uh, so. The first one, first one uh, on the hearings, RDA 7 Pine, is it Haven or Haveling? It's Haven. Yeah, Haven. Haven. Well, what does it say on yours? Have. I bet Have. Have. Oh, that's a typo. I beat it. I thought so. So, if that's the only change, then uh, do we have a motion to approve those? I'll make that motion. Okay. On uh, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I abstain. Aye. Okay. Okay, that's done. Do this. Josh. Next. Oh. How are we doing? Good. How are you? Good. <laughs> Good so far. <laughs> uh, we we've lost a few members, as I'm sure you're you're aware. And I know you've only served a short period of time of your uh, your penance. Uh, <laughs> 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 would you be interested in uh, in I would. All right, how does that going to work out with your schedule? I know you've got a lot of demand. They're shipping him to Trinidad. No. What? In a 55-gallon drum? Or? Tough, tough life. No, uh, it's for two weeks in April. <laughs> oh, <okay>. So, um, <laughs> yeah, my job right now, I can pretty much get sent somewhere at any mm -hmm. point in time, but I'm currently looking for other employment, so 
Uh, it's probably going to change. You know you're on cable, future. right? <laughs> oh, they won't watch it. True that. Do you want to uh, take some time to think it over and see how that goes, or what's your, what's your pleasure? I don't think I need any time to think it over. Mm -hmm. Kind of been attending meetings now for quite a while. Quite a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the thought has come up several times, so I, th I think I'm all set. Well, if we haven't scared you away by now. <laughs> We'll okay. submit your name to the selectmen because they're the appointing authority. Right. Do we need a motion for that? We need a motion to recommend his name to the. To I the make select. a motion to recommend Josh Fayette. He is a full member. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Get that over. I'll, I'll, I'll send something over to <coughs> Tracy. Tracy's good at that. Wilton. Introduce yourself, please. Well, we're at it. Hi, I'm yeah. Wilton Gray. Sorry. The fourth. Um, oh, no. The fourth, yeah. I'm sure some of you know my dad. Yes. Um, I'm in my last semester, my senior year, at UMass Dartmouth. I am an environmental and civil engineer. I plan in April, I'm going to take my FE exam to become an EIT, mm -hmm. and in the future, take my PE to become a professional engineer. Mm -hmm. uh, I, my interests right now are in environmental, uh, environmental engineering aspect of it, because civil is pretty broad. I'm also interested uh, in wetland conservation, mm -hmm. and I feel like the position here would provide me with plenty of opportunity to learn. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah. Yeah, do you have any questions for me yeah. on that? Yeah. Do you have um, any coursework in wetland science or wetland permitting or wetland um, um, I took, or I took some uh, environmental engineering, which did a little bit of that. Uh, my internship currently, I am with Atlantic Design Engineers out of Sagamore. Oh, yes, I know those. And I do great. a lot of surveying work, so I'm okay. doing like using trimbles to locate yep. wetland flags, uh -huh. and okay. I know, like, they deal with the wetland uh, properties a lot. Oh, that's so great. Yeah. For you. Yeah. So, yeah. And when were you, you last year school, is that what you said? This is my last semester, yeah. Oh, good for you. So, oh, in May, yeah. graduate. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Good luck with the, with the FE exam. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's it's kind of stressing out about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. no worries. And so, you know, we meet uh, twice a month and, you know, you're able to come to the meetings. And mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's a big thing, obviously. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. it's late, late enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's nice. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you for Yeah, does anyone tonight. else have any questions for me? So we want to, again, write a letter and uh, submit his name to the selectmen. How many members are we missing? Two. <laughs> I can't count. <laughs> Two. So that would fill the board. Uh, yes. You would be an associate member? Is that what we're talking about? Or are we talking about... Well, why, why not? Do we have anybody well, else who's interested? If, if, we, if he becomes an associate member, that means we will have now... Six, six, number six, six. Yeah. which a is number. a dangerous you, number. A dangerous number. You yeah. want to have an, an uneven right. number, uh -huh. so we should make him or submit his name as, as a full member. Okay. As a full member. Do you have a resume? Have you submitted one to the the selectmen? I have not, but I will. I can. I think that'd be a good idea. Yeah, yeah. definitely. He, he did submit a letter of interest. Yeah, yeah. 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 I submitted a letter. Right. It's not my resume. Yeah. Okay. But I definitely can easily do that one click. All right. Does yeah. it have to be? Fancy, just yep. something that gives us a. I think that should be. Yeah, no, yeah, I have a resume on. Yeah, that should be here. the resume should be submitted to us so that we can include it with the letter. The recommendation, yeah. With the recommendation. So, Lenoir, would you want me to send that to you? Yeah, the, the conservation. Okay. Yeah. Email. Yep. That'd be great. Yeah. Perfect. So, do we need another motion? Mm -hmm. Same as last time. I make a motion to to recommend Wilton Gray as a full member of the commission. A second. All there. Aye. Hi. Yeah, thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Don't blame us. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> we, we tried to scare you off. Yeah. <laughs> I have a, a question before we jump forward to the last thing. When yeah. we were going through the minutes, it, it kicked up again to me. Uh, Pine Bluff boat ramp. What? Say that again? What boat ramp? Oh, yeah. Pine Bluff. Pine Bluff. Yeah, boat Pine Bluff. The, well, the one with the geo. Um, the geo grid. Oh, right. That was a determination. Yeah. Yeah. It's really not a boat. We ramp. we did get. The, you're concerned about the plan. Well, they, did we receive the? And did they go forward? Did they put up the silt fence? Have they? What's happened? I haven't been down there. I we, really feel like that was we. We had we bent quite a bit to get them. Two meetings ago, right. did we have someone in to talk about that? No, it was no. It was what? It was. 
two well, months ago, maybe. Yeah. That was um, that was back in September when they came in. Right. September. They did come in with the stuff that you had asked. He did come in the next day, he gave me the plan. stuff. Okay. But um, I haven't been down there since, so I don't know whether they've done the work or not. I could. It's just a, you know, it was going down a hill. Right. Gravel. Yep. Could be un if they don't put up the siltation barrier, it was going right to the wetlands. Yeah. The whole the whole road was eroding into the pond. You know, they were, you know yeah. it was it was bad. Yeah, and they had the best intentions, but Definitely. again, I mean, it seems well, next, next time you're in town, why don't we make it a point okay. to, to go out there? Yeah. Take a look. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sure. I'm curious about it, too, because I really am curious about how, how, it, how it worked, how it works, you know, yeah. if it works. Especially yeah. under these conditions with all the rain. Right, right. Good test. Yep. Yeah, right. Be. Okay. The so last, well, there's two more things. Beach Street? Beach Street, yeah. I got a. Yeah, did you find out who actually violation. owns that yes. little hunk of property? Well, there's two issues on Beach Street. One was done by Nashawati. That was, um, he widened the roadway, he dug a ditch, he cleared the vegetation, and put all the vegetation on top of uh, what was little left of the that ditch. Was there, yeah. Right. So um, it's about a thousand square feet of alteration without a permit you think that much definitely I hundred by hundred yeah i paced it off yeah it's about 10 feet wide you know 100 feet long so you yeah they keep trying to deal with water issues down there and trying to make it better and sometimes they make it worse right so i it was brought to my attention i looked at it i i, I certainly see it as a violation i don't know what the commission's would want to do about it. I think maybe the way we handled Mr. Pusateri, which was to ask him to come to one of our meetings and talk to us and, and then take He was going to there. come to the last one, but he had to do snow That's plowing. That's right. That's yeah. right. So that would be my recommendation out there because um, it shouldn't be, you know, it's, it's work without a permit. He said he was only trying to maintain the roadway, but that's best left up to the DPW. He, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of standards a DPW has to meet when they do roadway work, and I don't think Mr. Nashawati would Except I don't know think, that. What I don't to think do. our DPW does anything to those roads. I mean, that's yeah, they're essentially true that, yeah, true that. But yeah. I don't think we should allow people yeah. to just go out and do whatever they need to do. So I would suggest we bring them in and talk to him and and, um, and go from there. But that's really up to the commission. You, you have a number for him? I have a number for him. I don't have a number for him, but I... I, I can give him a call. Okay. If that's the commission's... No. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think it's just being consistent. Yeah. That's the way we treated Mr. Uh, Pusateri, yeah. and I think yeah. being consistent and is Are you going to ask approach. him to come to a meeting? Yeah, well, he was going to come to the last one, but... Oh, right. Yeah. And I, as a matter of fact, I, I don't... I think he might not have been notified that we were having this second meeting. Probably not. Probably because not, because he might not have known about it. Right. That's right. So we yeah. should, he knew about the other meeting. The other meeting, because he called and made sure that he right. said, I can't come. i got, I got right. to be snow plowing. Right. So if he can, you know, I mean, I don't yeah. think it's necessary for him to come in immediately. But yeah. I think we should at least have him in front of us. Yeah. Kind of a wrist slap, if nothing yeah. else. You know. And he has nothing to do Just with the right. other... Right, which is owned by an association. Oh, does the association own it? Yep. Hemlock Shores, or I forget what the association is. What is you and Huckleberry. Huckleberry Shores. Shores. That's Huckleberry exactly Shores, what yeah. it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we could write a letter to them. That that was, you know, about a thousand square feet too, wasn't it? Did yeah, we that kind off? of, yeah, yeah, roughly. Yeah, so again, maybe have, write them a letter and ask them to come in. You know, these kind of violations, I know they come up frequently, I think, Consistency, though, is the way we want to approach them. If if you folks feel that they don't need to come in, we can write them a letter. That's fine. I just want to reiterate that you and know, we usually when you take action as a board, it's very good idea to be consistent in your application because otherwise you run the risk of. Being I may take a, a trip down there because I know where the, the, the president of the association lives down there, and I'll talk to him. Okay. Find out because. We, we weren't sure exactly who it was that... Uh, yes, I looked done. it up. And, and for what purpose? Because when you get near the edge of the pond, they kind of stop cutting stuff. Yeah, right. So if the point was to gain access or maintain that access to the pond, which no one has ever used for anything. Right. I'm not right. even sure why it was being mowed like that. Right, right. And they I left know. all these punji sticks sticking up mm -hmm. over there. I wouldn't even want to try to back a trailer down there. You'd probably lose your tires. 
Yeah, it must be an access for the members of that homeowners association to get to the pond. Pond. Okay, so they're clearing it out to. But again, yes. it's I it's, know. it's not being used. Exactly, where are you talking about? The what? Bottom of. What's the name of that street? It's not. It's Hickory? not Hickory. Is it, is it Hickory? Yes. I'm not, the problem with that whole story is. When they built the houses on Robbins Lane, it, they were told they had they rights, had rights to, the to the pond. Beach. Can you yeah. go up to the pond, please? So please. Know, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and identify yourself also. Carolyn please. Richard. Oh, Carolyn. Thank you very much. You're welcome. That beach you're talking about is not the original one. Right. That's right. that new one. The new one. That's kind of tangled up in a little bit of a mess with deeds and different builders yep. and uh -huh. such. That's why it looks the way it does, what you're referring to, because there's only, I believe, three houses that are entitled to use that as a beach. And which are they, which, where are those three houses? Up on Robbins Lane. Uh, okay. The original ones, I believe. But I don't know because it's kind of messy. <laughs> So, well, it's owned by the Homeowners Association. That parcel that was cleared is owned by the Homeowners Association. Right. And there are two associations. Well, there's two associations, right. right. See, yes. that's where this the problem comes in. The old well, one is Huckleberry up. Shores. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right, Joe? The old one the is Huckleberry, Huckleberry Shores. Shores. And then the new right. one, Huckleberry. which even, is Huckleberry something. Don't even know what that I one is. I don't even know. Oh, well, okay, because when I went to the assessor's office, I know it said Huckleberry, but I, I'd have to look now and see. Maybe mm -hmm. they are separate they're, entities. They are. Okay. They're separate, but the names are very close. Okay. All right. Very close. Okay. Well, we can write them a letter or ask them to come in, whatever. Right. You know. Or next time I'm down there, I can ask, okay, who do I talk to down here? Right, right. And that was years ago, and that's why it was being maintained and then and then it was let go i mean it grew up right tremendously because we yeah. saw the shrubs and trees yeah. they yeah. were a good oh there was some right. stuff that big there the person next door was maintaining it and then he, he moved to a cushion right or someplace right on the corner there then yeah right he moved to a sonnet a sonnet okay yeah. Right. Yeah. And I moved out. yeah so that's I, I forget how we got the complaint so oh it came in through nate darling yeah that's yeah. right nate um, nate called yeah. us so yeah. but i was just concerned with the tree issue with beech tree. You're all set though, right? I, I am, and I just wanted to make sure I had that paperwork. Yes. In yes. the event someone saw the trees come and go. Yeah, very good. So, thank you and I bet with attentive the to that. And I bet with the wind we had the past couple of days, you were glad those trees were down, right? They are not down yet. <laughs> oh, they're not down oh. yet? Really? No, they are not down yet because- The wind didn't take them down? No, no, and they're not down because there's a lot of work going on down there, and we just didn't want to complicate things. Oh, right. okay. Right, right, right. Okay, kind of tight down there. Just as a reminder, Carolyn had come in at our 9-11 meeting, mm -hmm. and we had talked and said, yep. yes, we're going to allow you, you know, so right. I apologize for not getting that letter out to you sooner. It slipped through the cracks. And, and, and uh, I mean, we didn't do it. We we're waiting to hear from a tree guy. But like I said, there's a lot going on down there, and it's really tight. And If those trees didn't come down, in the past two days, they're never going to come down. Well, well. <laughs> Let's hope. I hope not. Yeah. I hope not. But we are planning to take them down as soon as everything down there gets straight. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for coming. All right. So the only other thing was old business, Mr. Pusateri. I did send the photograph um, and another email to DEP. I contacted Jim Mahala by Mahala, phone, yeah. and then I followed up when Nate and asked me to contact them again. I followed up with an email to Jim Mahala, and I sent him some photographs that I had taken. He has since contacted me with some questions which I see as a good thing. They're looking at it at DEP. He wanted to know when the work was done, whether or not it was agricultural Agricultural, exempt, yeah, yeah. And there was a few other questions which I answered and sent him back. So I haven't heard anything further from DEP, but I suspect they may be taking a, a good close look at that and may be taking action. So we'll know if they do. <coughs> it just takes a while at DEP. They get many, many calls for assistance and they have to prioritize them and a lot of them 
do not get any enforcement action at all. They have discretion, to, as we do. Enforcement is a discretionary thing, and DEP generally only takes on those cases that are, you know, egregious and, you know, clearly in violation and that maybe there's a penalty involved. That those are the cases they like to take. So we'll see if this is one of them. But I was encouraged that he did contact yeah. me with some, with some questions. So that's good. Well, hopefully it'll lead to, lead to something anyway. Just right. I hope so. Get it moving. Right. I hope so. Because mm -hmm. the second enforcement order was not picked up by Mr. Pusateri. He actually refused delivery. So that came back to us, and I've been sitting on it waiting to hear from DEP. Do, does Jim know that it was refused? Yes. I put that in my email. We have another audience member here? Yeah, we you know, I came, I, I stopped by uh, the Suckman's office just to come, I said I was interested in the position, it was open, uh, mm -hmm. and I put a letter in just to say, and she just said to come to the meeting. She told me to come to this day, mm -hmm. observe the meeting, and that's what I'm doing. I'm just oh, saying okay. what's going on, because I've never been, I don't think I've ever been to the Conservation Commission in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, but I am a land surveyor, and I deal with oh. stuff all the time. I don't walk around here so much, I'm mostly in Boston, mm -hmm. but, so I'm familiar with a lot of this stuff, but I don't know everything you guys do, but well, it's we familiar on the enforcement end. We, we always have a need for an associate member because they are the apprentices. Mm -hmm. They learn so, by, you know, right. attending meetings and watching them on television and so forth on Lake Camp. And what's your and name? Bob Staples. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, you know, like, if our new mem full-time member here suddenly get shipped off to Bermuda or some <laughs> such place as that. You know, that's why we need associate members. They have to come into the, they're the junior varsity to be upgraded to varsity if need be. I haven't seen anything from the select me. You said you sent a letter of interest, but. Uh, it was an email. I talked to the lady at the office, uh -huh. and she said, if you're interested, just send her an email. I sent her an email, and she told me to come to this meeting. Okay. And oh. just observe, you right. know, just seeing what, what you guys do. Who did you talk to, Tracy or Lorraine? Or Rita? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, think what? I don't know that her well, name actually. Is. I, we'll, we'll find what, out. What Bob's office was she in? Yeah. Uh, when you walk in, uh, right on the, on the left, left hand left side. side. Oh, All three of these people are in there, though. <laughs> okay. I don't know which one it was. One we we really can know. find out tomorrow. I'll find okay. out tomorrow. Okay. But I'm didn't just, see, I'm just interested in learning more if, yeah. if you need members. If you don't, well, we need everybody. Whatever. I just, I'm just. I've been living in my like Lakeville my whole life. Yeah, I've never right. served on any board, yeah. and I just happened to read in the paper, and I said, "Well, maybe I should go check that out. Maybe sure. that's something that'd be interesting." In I, I know I've learned a lot. Well, we meet uh, every month, the second so, Tuesday, so please, you know. So I didn't know what the meeting. process was. That's why I I just came here. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Just a, mm -hmm. so. Yep, we meet um, sometimes twice a month, Tuesday nights. Yeah, they said usually once or twice a month. Yep, yeah. and um, so that's certainly one thing. And then yep. the other thing would be if there's there's sites in town that we have to look at before you, you know, and yep. you, you might be able to help out with that occasionally or, um, you know, there's always something to do. There's always something to do. Huh. Looking at sites, looking at wetland areas, looking at and plans. And from time to time, we do yeah, have yeah. problems with lot lines, so. And I do serve <laughs> a bunch of wetland for, I mean, I don't, I don't make, do the designation usually, but yeah. I serve a lot of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. Good plans. to know. Well, I'll thank get, you. I'll get all your information uh, from the office tomorrow. Right, because they did not forward it to us, so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Our next meeting is March 12th, if you want to attend, right here. March 12th? Mm -hmm. yeah. March 12th, 7 o'clock. Same yeah. time. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. We'll see you again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Do we have anything else on our list? Motion to adjourn. Motion second. Motion. That's on the list. Yes, thanks, John. <laughs> okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Right. All in favor? Right down Bye. there. Bing, bang. <laughs>